In this video, I'm going to build and fly this RC FPV seaplane. It's kind of like a ground effect vehicle hybrid type of thing. It utilizes some interesting new construction methods that I've been wanting to try out. The inspiration for this design came from this old foam board flying sled ground effect vehicle from a few years ago. It flew so well that I thought it might be fun to build a nicer and more three-dimensional version. So let's get started. The majority of the body is going to be made from this pink insulation foam. I glued two 2 inch sheets together to form the stock piece that could be CNC machined into the final shape. Step 1 in the CNC machine is to plane down the top surface. This makes the stock piece perfectly flat so that after the top side is finished I can flip it over to mill the bottom side. So to cut the majority of the shape I'm using a quarter inch end mill. These milling operations take quite a bit of time, several hours for each side. And each side is finished off with a parallel tool path that really defines the final shape. So after the top was finished, I flipped it over and aligned the stock pieces with these indexing pins in the bed of the CNC machine. Those ensure that both sides will line up correctly. And here is the machine cutting the bottom side. This is just half of the plane. I had to do all this over again to make the other half. And as always, I'm using my 3D printed cyclone separator to collect all the foam shavings. Here's the vertical stabilizer slash motor mount. And here's the main body section coming out. Look at that. I had to slice off all the little tabs that held it into the foam stock piece, and then I gave it a quick sanding to remove any machining cusps. Next I had to fill some cracks in the foam. Unfortunately, this foam comes with pre-cut snap points in it so that when you're using it as insulation, you can chop it down to size more easily. Not good for building planes. Here's cutting the motor mounts out of some 2mm carbon plate on the CNC machine, and some of the other parts too. This is the top perimeter of the fuselage hatch, and this is the hatch itself. I glued the motor mount plate onto the vertical stabilizer and rubber banded that in place while the glue dried. This is some thin Kevlar weave that I'm cutting down to size to be used as the Elevon hinge. First I painted out some epoxy on the Elevon hinge line, and then I put Kevlar down and wetted it out. Then I put a layer of 2 ounce fiberglass over that. To give the bottoms of the pontoons a little extra strength, I did a layer of Kevlar on there, and then some 2 ounce glass over that. I put some vacuum bagging film over the wet epoxy and stuck the whole thing in a vacuum bag while the epoxy cured. The vacuum bag is just to ensure the composite fabrics are tightly adhered to the foam without any air bubbles in between. After the epoxy cured, I trimmed off the excess and did a little sanding. Then it was time to join the two wing halves together with Gorilla Glue, and after that dried, I draped a layer of 2 ounce glass over the entire thing. That took a while to wet out, especially with all the tight curves, but this 2 ounce glass is quite thin so it conforms to the surfaces pretty easily. You just have to make a few little relief cuts on the tight corners. Then I did the same thing to the top side of the wing. This time around I did not vacuum bag it because adding a separation layer like peel ply to such thin fiberglass can damage it when you peel it off. Also the surface finish and quality of the fiberglass is just fine without vacuum bagging, so it's not really necessary. The vertical stabilizers got glassed, and that went right up to the motor mounts. Then I trimmed off the extra glass that was hanging over the trailing edge, and gave everything a good sanding. Next it was time to free the elevons. I used the back side of a razor blade to score the fiberglass and epoxy on the top of the hinge line. You have to be really careful not to score too deep, because then you risk cutting into the Kevlar. Then I marked the top of the hinge line and cut away the fiberglass there. I picked the foam out of the hinge crease and slowly and carefully worked the hinge free. You're basically just breaking the epoxy that's inside the Kevlar fibers, so that they can return to their original flexible state. Then I cut the elevons in half to free them. Next I glued on the vertical stabilizers and motor mounts with epoxy, and then used hot glue to tack those in place while the epoxy cured. Next it's time to start on the fuselage. It's going to be made out of a bunch of 3D printed lightweight PLA sections that get glued together and then fiberglassed over. Oh by the way, I designed this entire plane in Onshape, so you know what that means. If you want to download or modify any of the native files, they're just a click away. Use the link in the description to sign up for a free Onshape account, and then use the link below that to access this model. Onshape is an entirely cloud-based CAD program which makes sharing files a breeze. So I glued all the fuselage sections together with superglue. Then I used a vise to press a bunch of M2 sheet metal press nuts into this carbon plate that will be used as the hatch perimeter. This allows me to bolt the top section of the hatch onto the perimeter section and hopefully keep water out while still allowing for easy access into the fuselage. This whole assembly will need to get epoxied into the fuselage, so to hopefully keep epoxy off the places that shouldn't have epoxy, I carefully painted all the no glue areas with PVA. To give you some context, this is what PVA looks like when it's dried. It's a thin film that can help prevent epoxy from sticking to things. 
I then glued that whole thing into the fuselage. This is kind of the front window frame. I painted all its no glue areas with PVA and then epoxied it into the fuselage. Next I cut channels into the wing for the wiring. I'm attaching the motors to the vertical stabilizers with some relatively weak silicone glue. This is to make them easily removable in the future. They're also held in place with zip ties that go over these little tabs in the carbon plate. Now it's time to attach the fuselage. That got some epoxy on the lower surface and then I attached it onto the wing. I used some fairing compound to make a nice fillet around the joint. I have this silicone squeegee thing that makes fillets easy. I did the same thing for the vertical stabilizers. This also adds a lot of strength. Here I decided that this just wasn't going to work. It was going to be too hard to fiberglass over the fuselage without getting epoxy in the hatch seam. So I chiseled that off and moved it to the outside of the fuselage. Then I carefully put glue around the perimeter and set that on top of the fuselage this time. The downside to this method is that it's not going to be as low profile, but at least it's going to be much more likely to actually work out. So we're going with it. Here I put Gorilla Glue in the wire channels so that it would foam up and fill the gaps. Then I cut some cavities for the servos. I'm using high-tech HS5086 waterproof servos for this build. This was a bad idea, but I put expanding polyurethane foam in the servo cavity and then used that to glue the servos in place. It foamed up way more than I thought it would, so I had to wiggle the servos while the foam cured. Unfortunately, not all problems in life can be solved by just wiggling until the foam cures. The human mind is quite a bit more complex than this airplane, and getting it to work properly is no easy task. Sometimes when you're feeling down, the best thing you can do is just talk to someone. In steps BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. Talking through your feelings with one of BetterHelp's 30,000 therapists can really help to put things into perspective and make sense of this crazy life we live. BetterHelp is a super convenient way to do this because it's all done remotely. This makes it easy to squeeze therapy into your busy schedule. They have an amazing algorithm that can help pair you with one of their licensed therapists, and in most cases, this takes less than 48 hours. If you think you might benefit from therapy, go to betterhelp.com slash rctestflight or click on the link in the description. Using this link helps support the channel, which is super cool, but it'll also get you 10% off of your first month there. With BetterHelp, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable. There's text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime, and you can even schedule a live chat for later. There have now been over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp. You should definitely check it out because improving your mental health will improve every aspect of your life. Now back to the video. Next up, I spackled over the remaining gaps around the wires. And for these wire gaps, I tried filling them with expanding foam. Then of course I had to go back and shave that down flat. It turns out I still had to spackle over it to fill the open cell foam pockets. Now back to the fuselage hatch. To smooth out the 2mm ridge that was created by moving the hatch rim onto the top, I put fairing compound on there. Fairing compound is basically like thickened epoxy. Next it was time to sand the spackle and fairing compound. I had the Dremel kind of help me bevel the edge of the hatch rim. Speaking of the hatch, I put PVA on the sides to prevent epoxy from sticking when I fiberglassed over the hatch rim. I also did PVA over the bolts, and then painted epoxy over the edge. Next I carefully laid down strips of fiberglass that go right up to the hatch and wetted them out. This part was probably one of the most tedious parts of the build. The entire fuselage section got covered in a minimum of two layers of two ounce fiberglass. Some areas got more. I glassed over the front window hatch part and the very tip of the nose. I also fiberglassed over the wires and the servos and the fillets in between the fuselage and the wing. After all that epoxy cured, I removed the hatch and carefully sanded down any little pieces of fiberglass that didn't lay down flat and also just smoothed everything all out. The knife helped with this too. Here's the control horns. Those were also CNC cut out of carbon fiber plate, and they got epoxied into the elevons. To strengthen the vertical stabilizers, I glassed over the fillets there. Here are the push rods going onto the elevons. Those connect to the servos on the control horns. Here's a closer look at the seam in between the 3D printed fuselage and the carbon rim hatch. Looks pretty good if you ask me. So I'm putting a DJI 03 air unit in this thing. And the tricky part about that is that it needs to be mounted in the fuselage to prevent water damage, but it also gets insanely hot. So to solve this, I'm making a heat sink that touches the O3 on the inside of the fuselage, but its fins are exposed to the outside of the fuselage. My CNC machine is not the best option for cutting aluminum. It kind of ends up just smearing it rather than cutting it. I had to take off like a half a millimeter on each pass, but eventually got it done. I used silicone based thermal adhesive to glue the O3 into the heat sink. The heatsink is going to get mounted in this hole that I cut into the bottom of the fuselage with a Dremel. 
That fit quite nicely in there, but the fuselage was pretty flimsy in that spot, so I added an extra layer of glass or two and wetted that out with epoxy. Here are the ESCs getting soldered onto the phase wires. They are just your average 40 amp BL Heli drone ESC. Finally, it's time for some spray paint. I decided to go with high vis orange because at one point I wanted to use this plane to surf ocean waves like a pelican does in the ground effect, but that ended up not really happening. Orange would have made it easier to find in the surf. Anyways, those ESCs got a little hot glue for waterproofing. I'm using an Omnibus F4 V6 flight controller running ArduPilot, and that also connected to the O3 for RC control and OSD data. I used silicone to finally glue the heat sink into the fuselage and form a watertight seal. I then used Velcro to attach the O3 camera inside the fuselage since it has some good vibration isolating characteristics. I CNC cut an eighth inch acrylic window for the O3 to see out of. That got siliconed into the very front of the nose and then I taped it in place to dry. Next came some ArduPilot configurations such as setting servo endpoints. I got differential thrust set up since this thing is not going to have rudders. Then I did some dynamic prop balancing with my trial and error method, and then I siliconed on the front fuselage hatch cover. So this is the original hatch that was CNC cut out of 2mm carbon plate. It ended up being way too heavy for my liking, so I cut a new one out of half millimeter fiberglass plate. There are some wire pass-throughs that go through that. This includes a charge port, the balance plug, and an XT60 jumper that is used to power the aircraft on and off. When any of these charge ports aren't being used, you can just put a layer of electrical tape over the top to seal them from water ingress. So that's pretty much it for the build. The whole thing came in at 1.5 kilograms, or 3.3 pounds. That's not exactly light for a plane of this size, but oh well, at least it's strong, or so I thought. Here's another look at the final thing before the first taxi test on water. This plane looks great, but will it work great? Let's find out. Tragically, this is where the problem started. When I would raise the throttle, the plane would occasionally get up on plane, but sometimes the nose and wing leading edge would just kind of get buried under water. When it would pick up a bit of speed, it didn't really seem like it was getting up on plane. I think this is because I made the pontoons too short for the weight. They really need to be taller and hold it off the water higher, and they also need to give it more of a positive angle of attack while it's sitting in the water. This is the gamble you take when you sink a bunch of time into building a brand new design. Sometimes it just doesn't work out as well as you had hoped. But water performance is only half of it. Let's see if it flies. Thankfully, it does indeed fly. And it flies pretty well at that. I did a few flights in auto-tune mode to get the autopilot flight controller gains dialed in. One thing that surprised me about this plane was just how fast it was. The speed wasn't exactly unexpected since the wing loading is pretty high for a plane of its size, but still, compared to the foam board planes I've been flying recently, this one is a good bit faster. So the first flight was a big success. I'm glad it didn't end up as a pile of splintered fiberglass and foam. Next I threw it in the back of the truck and hit the road. I took it to a high altitude lake in hopes of getting some scenic aerial footage, but then this happened. So what I think happened is there was a little split in the Kevlar on the underside of one of the Elevon hinges. When I throttled up, the force of the water ripped that split wide open and it tore the Elevon right off. This was all because of this step here. I think I scored the hinge line a little too deeply and accidentally cut all the way through some of the Kevlar fibers. I was able to drive the plane back thanks to the differential thrust. And there you see the separated Elevon floating away. So sad. That sucks. Then it was back on the road, and this time the destination was San Francisco for the Open Sauce show. I was one of the featured creators, and I had this plane on display in the Creator Museum. Some of you might have remembered it if you were there. Good times. After that, I took the plane home to fix it. Step one was to cut the old elevons off, and then mount some plastic hinges in the foam. These got connected to new Depron elevons that I made. Then it was back out on the lake for another test. Damn, does not want to go. The airplane was still not very eager to get off the water, but eventually it did take off. There it goes. <laughs> There's clearly something fundamentally wrong with the geometry of the wetted area under this plane. I think par thrust would be a great band-aid for it and probably help it take off relatively easily, but ultimately it would be better to just make the floats taller. All my other planes that I've tried to drive my boat next to have been easy to keep up with, but this one was not. It's super fast.
After that, I got out of the fog and did my first real FPV flight with this plane. <laughs> Woohoo, we're out. To improve this plane's performance on the water, I glued some Depron strips on that make the planing surfaces pretty much identical to the foam board planes I've built in the past that have worked really well on the water. I still think the plane floats on the surface of the water with not quite enough of a pitch angle. The reason I think this is because the rotation during takeoff is quite abrupt and then it just shoots up into the air. But that said, it does actually take off now, which is a big improvement from before. Yeah, it also planes better on touchdown. That's great. One thing that surprised me with this plane was just how little the ground effect affected it. I really didn't feel the ground effect at all with this thing. When I was flying low to the ground, it didn't feel like there was a high pressure cushion of air building underneath. I think this is likely because of its high airspeed. By the time the downwash had a chance to make it to the ground, the plane had already moved on. Or maybe it's just that the strength of the ground effect is more proportional to an aircraft's size than its weight. And since this one weighs more than my other planes, the ground effect has a harder time influencing it. Not sure. The next day we took it out to shoot some air to air video with the FPV quad. Okay, after this wake goes, I'm gonna take off. Copy that. Okay, this wake is almost passed. Three, two, one, here we go. <laughs> Told you, that sucks. Holy oh. shit. <laughs> yeah, this thing is... Uh, it's faster than I thought, too. Wow, you're way faster than I am, dude. Just keep that circle and I'll catch up with you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this thing is quick. <laughs> I wasn't even sure if you would be able to keep up at all. If I adjust my camera angle, I could definitely. <laughs> you are way faster than I am though. Yeah, I cannot keep up with you. <laughs> I thought Damn. you were gonna be a lot slower. Well, I'll just keep doing circles and you get me as I come by. <laughs> there we go. Are you keeping up now? Yeah. I can try and slow down. No, this is great. I'm on your ass now. This is perfect speed. Okay. I'll, I'll throttle down a little bit. I'm at 40% throttle. This is fine. We're, we're doing good now. Okay, I'm gonna do another flyby of the Gasworks Park cool. stuff. Yeah, just keep this speed. Okay, I'm diving a little bit. You got away from me when you dove. I'm gonna do another flyby over Gasworks. Right in between the smokestacks. I was right there with you. Nice. Okay, I gotta come back semi soon. Okay, what should I do? Just keep flying around? Yeah, or if you wanna try a land. I'll try and go lower. I'll fly over us. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to do a landing? Sure, why not? Okay, I I'll gotta, turn. I gotta land soon then myself. Okay, I'll, I'm turning and I'll land towards us. Go chase this east I guess I Okay, I gotta come back. 21-0. How was that? Oh, there's geese, wow. They just landed here. I can go see the geese. Yeah, you should go fly in formation with them. Do it really quick, I got battery for that. No, no, you should land before you lose. <laughs> before you lose it. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this video. I'll leave you with this 5K 600 frame per second footage from the Free Fly Ember. All in all, am I happy with how this plane turned out? Eh, not really. But at the end of the day, this project has added some good data to my mental model that will help me build better planes in the future. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.